So I thought I'd do a video on uh, something I've been thinking about for a while, and um, that's testing Atari Poke Chips. Normally, uh, the only way to really test a Poke Chip is actually putting putting on a game board and actually seeing if it works okay. And um, the sort of game boards that it's on are things like Centipede, Millipede, Asteroids Deluxe, Tempest Gravitar, Major Havoc, Crystal Castle, Star Wars, Missile Command, those sorts of games. And um, like I said previously, it's a case of actually just seeing if the chip works on the board, i.e. the sound is okay or the inputs are okay, um, whether the actual board crashes. Um, so I thought that there must be an easy way to, to sort of test um, an Atari Pokey chip, and um, I found that there is. So what I've done is um, I've taken a, car a cartridge out of a ball blazer um, cartridge like this one here, and this is what's, what's inside. And uh, what I've actually done is I've removed the ball blazer ROM, which is here, and uh, I've also removed the pokey chip that's on this on this cartridge that was here and uh, the idea was uh, that I'd try and find um, an Atari 7800 program that could test the pokey chip and I've actually managed to find a program called uh, Prickle that seems to do quite a good job it actually tests all the four audio channels of the pokey chip the other thing that I was trying to um, test out as well um, as part of this was um, the random number generator of the pokey chip, the uh, random number register, should I say. Um, and I was trying to work out a program to, to do that, but I actually found out um, that as part of the um, 7800 uh, basic um, program that the um, software is compiled in and written in, it can actually do that already. Um, all you actually need to do is uh, set the um, pokey support as enabled and it does a check um, on that random register uh, before it does anything else to make sure the pokey is there. So the modifications I made uh, to this ball blazer cartridge to actually get it to work is um, I put a uh, logic chip here, which I think is a, just checking that, I think it's a, yeah, it's a um, hex inverter, so it's an LS04, and what I also had to do is there's a jumper here, uh, I think it's labelled, yeah, W3, I actually lifted that so it's not connected, um, the other two jumpers at W2 and W1 which are here I just left, left them as default which I think is connected to 2 and 3 on each of them rather than 1 and 2. Um, so then what I did is I programmed a 27256 ROM with the Prickle software and obviously like I said I took the uh, pokey chip off the original cartridge here and put a socket in place so I can actually fit other, other pokey chips. So when I actually try this in uh, an Atari 2000, uh, sorry, an Atari 7800 with nothing, can, no pokey chip in, this is what happens. So if I just pop this in, all right, one sec, power on. It says could not find a pokey chip, and that's because obviously it's checking the random number register and uh, it's failing. So if I switch off and if I pop a pokey chip into this, make sure I put it the right way around. And if I pop this back in, power on, Sorry. There we go. I get a screen. So that's actually run the random register check and it's been successful. And then what I can actually do is check the four channels of audio here. So if I go to the first one and I go across, I can turn the volume up on that channel. And if I can change the frequency as well. 
until it's like 26. I'm looking, hearing a rough whooshing noise at the moment, but I can change the bell tones, a low rend rumble, bell tones, whooshing, pure tones, maybe buzzy, pure tones. And there you go, you get the idea that the first channel is working, and then I can actually mute that one by pressing the button there on the joystick. And then if I move over to the second channel, I can do the same again. Change the frequency. And then change the sound. And then do the same again and mute that channel, so that's working okay. Move to channel 3. Oh, I muted it, sorry. to channel 3, there you go, uh, I can put the frequency up on that one again, and then again changing the different sounds, confirm that channel 3 is working ok, mute that one, and then channel 4, just mute it again, put the volume up on that one, change the frequency, and then again change the sounds. And that basically confirms that the random nub number register of the Pokey is working correctly and also all four audio channels of the Pokey are working correctly. The only thing that I haven't actually um, found a way of checking yet is uh, the digital inputs on the, on the chip which is basically um, pins 8 to 15 so I'm just seeing at the moment whether I can actually work out a method of um, method of doing that but um, I think that's basically a good a good test of um, checking a pokey chip without actually having it into in a game board in the back of the cabinet hello again so this is a bit of an update on the pokey tester and where I am with it um, what I've basically done is um, set up um, some components on a breadboard. So I've taken um, the plus five and the ground um, from the Atari 7800 um, cartridge, put into a breadboard, and so I've connected um, at the moment a dip switch, so dip switch one, um, via a resistor array. Um, to then connect to some of the input pins on the um, cartridge here. So at the moment I've only connected up, um, like I said, dip switch one of the uh, resistor array. So I've got the common um, part of the resistor array going to um, plus five, and then I've got um, pin one going to ground. And then obviously the connection beyond the resistor array on pin one, and this is basically how it's set up um, on um, an Atari schematic, and how they do it on um, um, arcade PCBs. And this this one in particular um, that I looked at to do this design uh, was um, an Asteroids Deluxe um, schematic. So what I've what I've actually done is I'm I've connected it to one of the input pins. So what I'll do is I'll start at the beginning at pin eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll start at pin eight. Okay, so I'm just connecting that there. So on screen, when I power this up, so at the moment the dip switch is off. If I power it up, you can see here where it says the input pins you get E4, 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 0, 0, E4. And basically the 0, 0 is the dip switch 1 being off. Now if I move that to the on position, if I just get my... Let me just... Uh, bear with me a second. If I move that to the on position like that, that then changes to E4, 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 and E4. So the uh, input channel that was 0, 0 is now E4. So I'm just going to put that back to as it was, so we can identify other pins. OK, 
Okay, so that's um, back at off. Um, as you can see, then it's now at zero, zero again. So I'll just power off. If we go to the next pin, which is number nine, power on again. Again, we can see the zero, zero there, but it's in a different position. Power off again. And we go to number 10. Again, we can see zero, zero and so on. So number 11, and we can see zero, zero in a completely different position. And I'll just do 12. Again, zero, zero in a completely different position. And what you can do obviously is go through all the pins, um, eight to 15, and you can switch the um, dip switch on and off to see that that, that um, value on the input pins on screen changes. And I think that basically concludes all the tests um, for the pokey cartridge.